Yep. Um, Birk, do you want to start us off? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Birk. Uh, I've worked on the App Hub and the continuous delivery here and the redesign and uh, the back end there. I've uh, been doing it since the beginning, actually, uh, and we recently redesigned the App Hub. So we will uh, present this for you and do a little demo. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's exciting to see you all here. And then uh, Mehdi, next. Yeah, sure. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Mehdi. And um, I'm also a front-end developer, and I've helped uh, with the new redesign of the App Hub and the new version of the App Management app that we're very happy to present today. And uh, Deborah, your turn. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, well, Deborah, my name is Deborah Galeano, <laughs> and I'm a developer advocate at DHS2 um, since January. And um, well, my, my job is to, um, to work with the, with the DHS2 developer community uh, so we, uh, I guess the, the connection here is that we get applications um, that are submitted to the App Hub. And so, yes, I'll talk about it a, a little bit later. <laughs> yes. Sounds good. Thank you all. And uh, you'll hear from all of them quite a bit more during this presentation, but I wanted to give a quick introduction of who we are. Uh, my name is Austin McGee. I'm the deputy tech lead of DHS2. I uh, have been working for about three years with DHS2 on uh, application infrastructure and kind of extensibility. Um, uh, and part of that is how we have gotten to a point where we can do continuous application delivery, how we can uh, um, conti pr provide core applications in a release cycle that is more frequent and more uh, re reactive than the, the typical server uh, release cycle of every six months. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. See, we're getting a, a few more people here, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and get started since uh, we have a limited amount of time. So today we'll talk about a few things. Um, first, I'll give a quick overview of what is continuous application delivery. Why does it matter to all of you, to the, to the DHIS2 community, what it means for developers, what it means for implementers, what it means for the UIO core team as well. Um, I will then turn it over to Birk, who will introduce the new App Hub. We have done a complete redesign of the App Hub. It's much, much friendlier uh, to look at. Uh, and has a lot of new features that are that are very cool as well, um, and I think you'll I think you'll all enjoy that very much. Um, then Medi will introduce the new app management app, which is the second piece of that puzzle, which allows applications to be installed into a DHS2 instance um, from the App Hub as well as custom applications that are being uploaded. That is a, a new version of that. It has been completely redesigned. Also, um, uh, is a hundred times better than than the previous version, um, and that will be coming out uh, in the near future. Um, so we'll we'll demo that quickly today as well, um, and then Deborah, as she mentioned, will uh, talk a little bit about the developer community. The developer portal is where we keep all of our uh, documentation and our um, uh, yeah, uh, all of all of the material that is focused at the developers who are building on top of DHIS two. Uh, and a big part of that is also the guidelines and the um, uh, tutorials for how to submit applications to the App Hub and what it means, not only for developers, but also for implementers, um, what those guidelines mean. So what, what it means when an app has been accepted to the App Hub, what kind of um, uh, reviews are, are, are conducted on those applications uh, and what it means to install one of those apps into your own instance. Then I'll talk a little bit about where we can go from, from there, where we're, where we're going next with all of this continuous application delivery work um, and the App Hub as well. Um, I won't get into that too much because there's a lot that we could talk about, but uh, we're going to focus on what, what is uh, available for all of you today. Um, and then I will open it up for a few minutes of questions if we have time at the end, uh, and hopefully we can uh, so if you're, if you're thinking about uh, any questions that you have about what this means for you or how you would interact with the App Hub or the App Management app or continuous delivery of core applications during the presentation, please think about your questions and we will address them at the end of the presentation. Um, yeah, thank you. And you can also feel free to post those questions in the chat, in the chat here on uh, Zoom 
uh, and we will address those at the end as well. So what is continuous application delivery? Um, I'm gonna start by talking about what, uh, what the status quo is, what happened before we introduced continuous application delivery, which was in the 235 release um, back in November of 2020. Um, so before 235, bundled apps were set in stone. This means that if you had the, all of the 30 plus applications that come built into DHIS2, that's things like the dashboard application, the data visualizer, the capture app, the maps application, the settings app, the app management application, um, the SMS configuration app, the scheduler app, anything that shows up in that um, application dropdown in the top right corner of your, your DHIS2 instance, um, when you first install DHS2, those are set in stone and they don't change until you, you upgrade your server um, to include a, to a version that includes a new set of those applications. Um, and what does this mean in practice? So the, the first scenario that I'll go over is kind of the best case scenario. There's not, it's not gonna be much quicker than this in, 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 in most real situations. Um, so let's say you're running DHS2 version 234.4, which is the latest patch release of the 234 major of DHS2. Um, the, you have discovered a very small visual bug that affects the maps application in that version of DHS2. Um, it may be a very small visual bug, but it um, is something that you need fixed because your users are, are getting confused by it or something like that. Um, so you report it to DHS2. Two weeks later, um, DHS2 uh, core team is able to address that issue and fix it. Um, may, it might take much longer than two weeks, depending on the severity and the, um, the, the work that is also being done by the core team on other issues. Um, but let's say it takes two weeks, um, which is a pretty, pretty reasonable turnaround time. Um, but the, the issue comes when even though this is a very small bug that, that is in the maps application that has been fixed in the maps application, um, you need to wait until the next core, uh, the next release patch release of the 234 version of DHS2 is actually released in the wild. And that might be another six weeks um, after that fix is made. So if it's six weeks later, then we're at eight weeks. Um, and then it might take, uh, or it should, probably will take another amount of time, um, let's say another two weeks to test and do a full upgrade of your production instance that's running at the national level. Maybe you have a uh, horizontal replication of that uh, DHS2 instance. Maybe you need to upgrade it on a, a test or a staging server, test it out to make sure it's ready, do test all the different changes that have been made to the uh, DHS2 core, as well as all of the applications validate those, then move it to your production instance. And let's say at best case, that takes another two weeks um, to, do, to do all of that process in a, in a responsible way. So now for this very small bug that was very easy to fix, it has taken 10 weeks to uh, and required a lot of, of effort and some amount of risk on your side, as well as the DHS2 core team side to address that issue, to get it out into a release, to upgrade a production instance um, it's quite a quite an, an endeavor, and if you if you want that fix in the maps application, you have no other choice. You need to go through all of these steps and take these uh, put in this effort and take this risk. Um, so that is how how uh, it exists today um, for those bundled core applications. Um, there are some kind of hacks or ways around that that you can use to. Um, to expedite this process, but the risks go up significantly. So it is possible to take the latest development um, version of DHS2 um, and run that, but that's something that I would not recommend and we do not recommend for most production instances unless you really know what you're doing and, and are able to test it yourself. So that's a lot of effort and risk as well. Um, and again, this is the best case scenario, right? So another scenario that I can outline is, is more of a worst case. And it, this is actually probably not even the worst case. There are times when it would take even much longer. Um, and this is the case where there's a feature that has been introduced to the maps application. So it's not going to be backported to 234.4 um, or 234.5. 
it's going to be uh, released in 237, which is the next version that's coming out. So um, it's just a, it's a pretty small feature, but it's important for your use case, maybe in uh, to take a, an actual example in the Maps application in 236. It's the ability to calculate population totals using Google Earth Engine and the Grid3 um, uh, world pop data um, using your, your org unit um, uh, geometries from DHS2. So you can say, for this district, I want to get the uh, high resolution um, estimate of the total population um, in this org unit or within five kilometers of a facility. Uh, which is a very cool feature, but it's not something that is going to cause instability in your whole system. It's not something that you uh, need to uh, consider other parts of DHIS2 when you're considering that feature. It's just a feature of the MAPS web application that is uh, has been developed, is available in uh, the 236 release. If there is a similar feature in 237 um, and you're running 234.4, you have no option to up to that version of the Maps application unless you also upgrade your server from 234.4 to 237. 237, uh, the major releases of DHS2 are only every six months. So you might need to wait six months to get your, uh, to be released. And once it's released, you also spend a lot of time to actually upgrade. Uh, in a responsible way, your production instance. And going from 234.4 to 237.0 is a much more risky and, and um, uh, involved task than going from 234.4 to 234.6 or 234.5, which is a much smaller amount of change. It's not any breaking changes, whereas you might have breaking changes between 234.4 and 237.0. Um, so that might take another five weeks to do the testing on a uh, on a test instance to um, test it in uh, in maybe a small smaller um, DHS two instance and then roll it out to production. Make sure that it's working well in production. Monitor it while you're while you're doing that rollout. All of those types of things. And there's a lot of other risks involved because many things have changed between two thirty four point four and two thirty seven point zero. Even if only one thing has changed in the Maps application. So it could take 20 weeks, could take more than that, uh, and require a lot of effort and risk in order to uh, get access to a single feature in that MAPS application. So how do we address this? In 235 and uh, 236, we've introduced a feature called continuous uh, application delivery or core application overrides. Um, and basically, this means that within your 235 or 236 instance of DHIS2, you have a maps application that comes with the, the war file of your DHS2 instance. Um, and you can also now install a new version of just that maps application in your DHS2 instance, and it will override the version that's built in. Um, this means that you can get those that latest feature that you want. You can uh, fix a, a simple patch just within the maps application. You know that it's not going to affect any other parts of your system. There are some applications where there are features that could affect other parts of your system. So you still have to be somewhat cautious about when you do this, but it's a much smaller scope to change. And it's something that can allow the core team to release on a much faster schedule each of our applications and that make those available to the community so that they can install them into their DHS2 instances and get the latest features and fixes in a much faster way. So this is uh, the, the end result is that within 235 and 236 and going on 237, et cetera, um, implementations can get new app features and fixes much faster. Um, and in order to enable that, the UI of core applications will start to be released on the App Hub very soon. Um, so we'll see today the app management app, which has been released um, on a limited basis to the App Hub. Um, that will be rolling out shortly, and we'll be getting all of the other applications that the core team develops onto the App Hub in the near future as well, uh, which will allow us to release on a more uh, a, a higher cadence or more more quickly um, those applications and get them into the hands of people that are running 237 in the future, but also 236 and 235. And we'll talk a little bit about the challenges and how we how we address that um, in a few minutes. Um, 
So with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to Birk to give a quick demo of the App Hub. Um, but first, I'll go to that slide and just talk about um, talk about it at a high level briefly. Basically, we have redesigned the App Hub so that it is um, uh, yeah much nicer to look at, much easier to use. Uh, and has a number of features that Buke will demo uh, to you today. So this is available to you now if you go to apps.dhs2.org. Go ahead, Buke. Over to you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Can you see my screen as well? Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. As Austin said, we're great as on the app hub. Recently, you can see it for yourself at appsdhs2.org. Uh, we've done this to uh, improve the design. Uh, it's made by our designer, Joe Cooper, uh, and uh, we've tried to implement to his specifications. Uh, and it's also to align with our new like UI design uh, philosophy and uh, components. So this is the new app hub, the front page. Uh, you can see the cards for the apps. Uh, you can click on the apps and you will get a nice overview, the screenshots, um, and also to be able to download the latest version here. Um, so, and you can see the um, compatible versions or you can filter by uh, like DHS2 uh, versions and you will see the versions of the app that is compatible with that uh, DHS2 version. So let's go back to the front page here. And here as well, you can search for, uh, for an app keyword and, uh, and find the app you want to uh, look at. But for um, application developers, hopefully some of you are and want to upload apps. Uh, so let's sign in. Uh, we've recently also added support for uh, GitHub login, uh, which hopefully maybe some of you don't have uh, Google or don't want to use Google. We now support GitHub social login. So here you can see I'm on my GitHub user. Um, I have some example apps here uploaded. The first time uh, you try to upload an app, um, you'll need to create an uh, organization first. And this is also kind of new. Uh, we had some simple organization um, features uh, in the old uh, app. So if you were a power user, you might have seen that. But the idea here is that you create an organization so you can upload and share like access to apps together uh, and not like one user has to do all that stuff through their social login. So you will create an organization and then you upload your app to that organization and everyone uh, in that organization has access to upload new versions and apps to that organization. So you have to be uh, a bit careful who you assign or uh, invite to your organization. So um, in an organization, uh, let's go here, uh, then uh, testing, and then you can invite members. So now you can do, um, you can invite through an email address uh, and they will get a notification or an email. Uh, I can show you here maybe, uh, hopefully, yeah, here you can see I got an email with an Link and when I click that, I will get to the app hub. Um, you will sign in uh, with the uh, user you want to join that organization with, uh, and then you can upload an app. Uh, I will try to let's see, uh, upload an app. Uh, I'll try to keep it pretty simple, uh, but it's still uh, just show you uh, some changes we've done. So we tried and made our process a bit. Um, better or, or eat, um, and more strict. So in that sense that we are uh, more comprehensive in the re reviews of app and don't want like any app there, but we still want to encourage and we want to encourage uh, like best practices for UI design and securities uh, and also consistency. So many times you could upload an app here with a name that didn't match the name in your um, manifest and it will show up in DHS2 instance as a different name. So we now have um, have uh, like a check for this. So you might get an error uh, if you try to uh, upload an app that uh, and the version as well. So if you try to, so I will show you here as well what the error looks like. Um, so I have, a, I have a completed app here, an example app. Uh, and also, let's see here, pictures and the logo. 
and select an organization, the testing organization. Yeah, let's see, uh, showcase. Save, and then you see manifest version doesn't match uh, a version. And you, uh, if you saw it was 1.6, so if I added this to six, it should work and upload up. Yeah, so the app is uploaded. Now uh, the core team and we will wait the uh, look through the app and try to uh, get back to you with the feedback. I'm sorry, the mouse is a bit annoying, uh, but yeah. So hopefully uh, that's it and I will show you uh, the next one. Uh, so to complete this process with apps on the App Hub, we realized um, it's kind of annoying to manually upload apps like I just showed you. Um, so the way you would do that is go to your apps again, click here, edit the new version, and then upload the file. So we have created a tool, uh, sort of get back here, created a tool uh, in the DT app scripts uh, to, uh, CLI, which you might be or might not be familiar with, but it's a CLI tool that has a lot of utilities to work with uh, apps. And you can also create your first app with this tool um to create, get some uh, kind of template and start working on that very easily uh, but the the thing here is that we want to automate the uploads to the app hub uh, and you don't want to manually do it since like it's hard to keep in sync and it takes time and yeah it's just annoying uh, so you can keep up to date automatically with the publish command um which i'll show you i have a, a an example app here that is just uh, created with uh, D2 app scripts in it. Uh, and it's just a simple app uh, with the app shell uh, with that platform. Uh, you can see more on developers.org on the docs page uh, if you want to know more. But basically, the only thing here is that I've created a GitHub workflow uh, that calls D2 app scripts publish. So, and this uh, workflow is um, triggered on, on release. So let's try to create a new release here, uh, draft a new release, uh, create a version. So the last one, if we go back, uh, was 1.7, you can see here. Let's try to create 1.1.8. And then publish release. So now the GitHub workflow will be triggered, uh, hopefully uh, when that release is released. Uh, and you can go to actions here and, and it should run. Uh, and you can see it started. This will take some time since so it will build the app uh, and then it will publish to the, to the app. Hub. And you can see here as well, if you go to actions, uh, uh, previously ran one, you can see a step here released to app hub and it's released. Uh, and you can, the, the app here is this one. So this is the testing app. I won't show you all the process. So this is uh, a bit more technical. But there is a guide uh, and there's a link here. So if you follow this link, uh, guide publish app hub, uh, there's a guide here, how to set up your app to uh, set up continuous delivery for your app to the app hub. So you don't have to manually upload apps. And um, yeah, and try to, yeah, this is very uh, cut, cutting edge as well. So uh, if you start looking into this now, you will be on the, yeah, on the very bleeding edge on the, on the technology we're using. So we still don't really have this implemented in uh, most of our apps right now, uh, but uh, it's something we, we want to do. And you can also follow along with us and see how this goes uh, and use the same and be on the same page as we do. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's a quick demo and introduction. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll be glad to answer them at the end of the session or in the chat and we will ask that on the community practice. Uh, and also I just want to mention here that some of you might have a zip file or just any app, but you also always have a manifest, right? So the this DHS to publish command reads your information and uses that to publish to the app hub. But we really encourage you uh, to look at the uh, uh, developers docs again and use the, what we call the DHS to application platform uh, to set up your app uh, as I did here in this example app with the D2 uh, scripts in it, uh, which uh, wraps your app in the application platform and you really don't have to 
create a lot of uh, or do mo any configuration at all basically you just have to create like some of your title in the in the um, digits to config and the id so yeah i think that's it for me hopefully that was okay and then i'll hand over to medi for the app management app and see how you can use apps in um, in your DHS2 instance and install it directly from the app hub as well after it's published and accepted on the app hub. Thanks, Rick. Sure. Um, okay, let me share my screen. And okay, right. So um, now that you've all seen the new changes coming for developers of custom apps uh, for continuous delivery, we'd like to present the changes made for the consumers of apps. Um, so as we mentioned before, we're going to uh, we've redesigned the app management app completely for 2.37. But we're also going to release a, a beta version for 2.35 and 2.36, as these versions also support continuous delivery and would really like to push it out to everyone. So what we present now is the uh, new features, which are upgrading uh, bundled core apps made by uh, the UIO core team, searching and storing apps on the App Hub, which we've uh, added a new page for, and details about each App Hub app, um, as well as the new uh, simplica simplification of the sidebar. So this is the new app. And as you can see, we've got a page for core apps, which are made by the UIO core team. Custom apps, which are those found on the App Hub or maybe even manually installed as a zip file. An App Hub page for searching for App Hub apps and then uh, installing them as well. And finally, a manual install page that allows you to install any zip file as you've done before. So if we compare to the previous App Hub, uh, App Management app, sorry, you can tell that these uh, three or four sections uh, have been actually combined and merged into the core apps and custom apps. And the reason why we've done that is because continuous delivery is a method to provide uh, updates to core apps. So we'd really like to provide a page just for that continuous delivery feature. And hence we've uh, simplified and separated into two. So you know that any updates on this page will be uh, provided by us and will be uh, safe to use with your instance. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We look forward to using the beta version uh, very soon. And um, of course, we we welcome any feedback in any way to make your lives easier in accepting continuous delivery. And uh, that's it for me. Now on to Deborah. Thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, Deborah, did you want to talk about a little bit of what it means for an app to be on the App Hub and how we uh, uh, how people can find out more about that? Yes, sure. Um, I can't share my screen, actually. Um, I'm not sure if I should. Uh, um, oh, okay. no, you can. Yes, thank you. OK. Uh, OK, so we, um, well, the, the goal of um, submitting your application to the AMP Hub, uh, we would want to see um, applications are generic that um, are specific and uh, in solving a problem or a use case that is not covered already by DHS2, um, but all, by other DHS2 uh, applications. Um, so this this will be uh, something great, I mean, in, and useful for the entire DHS2 community. And uh, so it's, it's um, um, it's highly encouraged and uh, we are working towards uh, making this uh, an easier process uh, for developers. Um, and for that, uh, we have put together um, a document that's called the App uh, Hub Guidelines. And I'll show you uh, where to find it in a little bit. Um, so what this means is that, uh, yeah, you, you will see a section of each uh, of this um, um, I guess, requir not requirements, but recommendations that you can see on the slide here. Uh, I will go through uh, some of this uh, in a little bit. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, process of uh, uh, reviewing these uh, submissions. 
And I think Austin and uh, Birk already mentioned, uh, we review this applications um, every week. And um, we go through the, yeah, we see if, they, if the, the applications follow the guidelines. Um, and then after that, we provide uh, feedback to the developer. Um, and um, yeah, and, and, then, and then if it's approved, it will be uh, publicly available in the app hub. Um, so if it's rejected, of course, you're, um, uh, you, you can resubmit it. Um, and if you have any questions uh, or if, you find, if we find some issues, then you can always uh, reach out to us uh, and um, yeah, we'll be uh, happy to, to help you in the process. Um, and I will just quickly show you uh, where to find this, uh, the, the documentation of the app hub and we quickly showed um, how to find the guides. But if you go to developers.dhis2.org, you go to docs um, and then you go to the guides uh, section and then you will see the app hub here on the left. Um, you will find the guide on how to submit an app to the, to the app hub. Uh, and uh, this is what they uh, showed, how to set up continuous delivery to the app hub. Um, and here you will find the um, app hub submission guidelines. Now the, the first section is about um, uh, general things um, that well, the app has to have a, a, a clear and a descriptive name. Uh, it has to have a unique icon, for example, um, and also a clear description, uh, screenshots, and well, the, the, the source code will be a required field. So you, yeah, you would have to provide a public uh, repository. And these are the, um, yeah, the guidelines for the app itself. Uh, so generic means that it, it's available, it can run or it can work on any DHS2 instance. Um, if it's useful is what I said uh, earlier, um, that um, it should cover something that hasn't been already uh, before. And uh, yeah, open source, well-designed, uh, documented. Uh, now we have a, a, yeah, a big section on security. So uh, I won't go over this, but you can uh, check this um, uh, on your own and then it should be performant. Um, this is uh, more about what I mentioned also, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I, oh yes, okay, so if there's something that is not clear, um, feel free to reach out or um, just comment on, uh, uh, yeah, on, on the thread uh, of today's uh, session or uh, on the Slack if you're not there, and that actually brings me uh, back to my last point, which is um, that I'll be uh, talking about the uh, developer community updates tomorrow during uh, uh, the session at 3 uh, p.m. Oslo time. Um, uh, Austin will lead the session on the uh, uh, DHS2 platform and also Victor from the Android team. Uh, and there you will be able to uh, know more about um, yeah, the recent updates on the developer portal uh, and um, online meetups that we have been um, hosting and um, other ways of getting in touch with uh, the, the DHS2 uh, developer community and that will be uh, joining the Slack workspace. If you're not there, uh, just let me know on, in the thread and I'll uh, send the, the invita invitation link there. Um, I think that's it on, on my side. Um, and now I will, yeah, feel free to ask any questions in the, in the thread and I'll, um, Pass it over to Austin. Thanks, Deborah. I will share my screen once again. So you should be able to see my screen here, and I am going to um, go down to where we were and share this. So hopefully that was uh, an informative whirlwind tour of the App Hub and the App Management app and what it means for an app to be submitted to the App Hub. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit now about uh, how this actually affects implementations in practice. So 
how do uh, how do I, as a manager of a DHS2 instance, um, benefit from these changes? I'm not a developer. How do I make sure that I can use these in a in a, in a reasonable way to get the latest features to my users of my DHS2 instance? Um, to do that, I'm actually going to, to do a demonstration because this is something that is available in 235 uh, and 236. Uh, and we'll be seeing the, um, uh, the app management app rolled out to be available for those versions in the near future. Currently, we do have that new version of the app management app available on the App Hub, but only for 237. So only uh, in development at the moment. So we're doing some final validation to make sure that it is rock solid and ready to go before we uh, uh, launch that for 235 and 236 as well. Um, when we do have it available for 235 and 236, you will see when you open your app management application, uh, you should see at the top a banner that says a new version is available. Click here to update. Uh, and that will automatically upgrade just the app management app within your DHS2 instance uh, in order to uh, take advantage of those uh, great new features that um, uh, a new look and feel that uh, Medi demo. So I'm going to go ahead and actually do that manually here now. So I have the, the dev, um, so this 237 version of DHIS2 that I'm running. Um, if you're running 235 or 236, this will this app management app on the App Hub page uh, will still be the old one. It won't be the new one available yet, but it should be available soon. And we'll make an announcement when that is available. But for 237, this, this uh, app management app is available. And I'm going to go ahead and install it. So it's installing the app from the App Hub. Uh, it's now been installed successfully. We can see that it showed up here, but we're still in the old application because we, um, uh, we haven't refreshed the page yet. But now if I refresh this page, I'm at the exact same application. So I'm in my, in my same server. I'm still at the DHIS web app management URL. Um, it's still version 237 um, that, that does not have this application bundled in it. But now I have installed this app management application um, that overrides the, the built-in one. Um, so now I can do just as uh, Mehdi was demonstrating, I can see the custom apps that I have installed. I can look at details for the, the app management app that I just installed. I can uninstall it. Um, I could install a different version if a new version was available. Um, I can also see the uh, details about all of these um, additional um, applications that are available. This one is uh, created by uh, probably some of the people on this call who are uh, at HISP Tanzania. Um, and so you could go ahead and install this directly, this version 234.1, um, and uh, could go ahead and install that if you wanted to, as well as other versions that are available. Um, all of this is coming, being pulled live from apps.djs2.org, the App Hub. Um, and so you can also um, go and view it there if you wanted to, as Dirk demonstrated. Um, we still also have the, the ability to upload apps manually. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that now. Um, I built a version, a new version of the dashboards application earlier. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and upload that version of the dashboard to this DHS2 instance. Uh, and the, the only thing that I changed in this version of the dashboard is that it um, has a, uh, basically has a different title. So it's called overrided dashboard instead of just dashboard. And that's just to demonstrate that you can um, override any of those applications with the same URLs that you're used to, um, to seeing before. Um, this is maybe taking a minute because my internet is a little bit slow. Um, so hopefully you can still see me. Um, but this is uploading that application. I'm going to come back to this when it's when it's done uploading in just a moment. Um, talk for a moment here about what we're next as well. I wanted to actually wanted to add one. Um, uh, point to what Deborah mentioned about these guidelines. Um, it's important to note that we do take security very seriously when we're reviewing these applications. 
Um, we don't, uh, we're, we're not going to be able to review everything and find every security issue out there. So applications that are developed by a third party and uploaded to the App Hub uh, are not supported by DHIS2, they're not, or, or the University of Oslo, um, but we do try to do our best effort to, to validate them. Um, but they are also all open source. So um, one of the requirements that we have for applications on the App Hub is that anything we, you're asking someone to run on their server, on their DHIS2 instance, um, needs to be open source so that you, the implementer, can view that source code and do a do a um, an audit of that system if you want to to be sure that it is something that uh, you you want to run uh, there. And you can also contribute back to that application as well if you have uh, developers on your team. Um, so being open source is one of the key requirements of uh, applications that are uploaded to this app hub. Um, and that's for for an important reason because the those applications are going to be um, have some privileged access potentially if you log into that application on your DHS2 instance with a privileged user. Um, you want to make sure that those applications can do um, only the things that, that you want them to do. Um, so they are open source and we do a, a review of them uh, as the UIO core team, but you should also feel free to do those reviews yourself and to contribute back to those applications as well. Um, so I actually had a bit of an internet problem and failed to upload this application. I'm going to try it again and then we'll see what happens. Oops, I might need to refresh. Can you all still hear me? Can somebody um, yes. confirm? Yes. Yep. Great. But you, uh, you did uh, kind of lag out a bit when you tried to upload last time. <laughs> yeah, Zoom, Zoom told me that my... Uh, Connection was unstable, but it, hopefully it's not because of this upload, but we'll see. So while that is uploading, um, I'll go ahead and talk about what's coming next. So uh, as we've mentioned, the UIO core team will be publishing a version of the app management app. It's actually already available for 237 for development uh, uh, branches or, or versions of DHS2. Um, and we'll be releasing that or making that available also to 235 and 236 versions in the very near future. Uh, that will allow those 235 and 236 implementations to upgrade their app management app to get this beautiful new user interface uh, to be able to, to browse more effectively the, um, uh, the App Hub applications, as well as to see when new versions of core applications are available, which is one of the key features there. Um, in order to uh, take advantage of that, the core team will also be continuously delivering all of our web applications to the App Hub using our continuous integration that Birk uh, demonstrated. Uh, that will mean that you can go to the App Hub and see the latest versions of all these applications, which versions of DHS2 core uh, server they support. Uh, and within your upgraded app uh, management app, you can actually see that maybe there's a new version of the dashboard or the maps application available. Uh, and you can just with one click upgrade that, that specific application in your implementation. Um, uh, this is still taking a long time. Uh, I will just demonstrate one more thing here. Hopefully it works. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to upload a new dashboard application because it's the upload is taking some time uh, and that's my internet connection here. Um, but I will demonstrate that you can actually go to um, uh, this app management application, um, which I have overridden, right? So I installed a new version of the app management app. Uh, I can actually uninstall that. So I can uninstall this version. Um, it's still here, but now if I refresh this again, it falls back to the version that was built into DHS2, um, which means that if something goes wrong or you don't like the update to this particular application, you can uninstall it and it will automatically go back to the one that you had before that was built into the version of DHS2 um, uh, that you installed. Uh, and that, there, that way it's very low risk uh, to adopt these applications because you can very quickly uh, roll back that change if for any reason you need to, uh, you need to do that. Um, so that's another very cool feature of the uh, application overrides. 
um, that allows us to uh, yeah, provide very, very safe and kind of granular upgrades of applications. Um, yeah, so the, the last thing that's coming next, um, I mean, there's many more that I'm not listing here, um, but the, uh, the core team will deliver the, the, uh, all of our web applications, so all of the applications that you have built into DHIS2 uh, to the App Hub using continuous integration. Uh, and many of those applications currently support multiple versions of DHIS2. So some applications that we are releasing with 237 you can also install into 236 or even 235 or even some versions before. Not every application will be like that because some need to be targeted at specific versions of DHIS2, but you'll see more and more core applications and hopefully third-party applications as well that are able to switch between different versions of the DHIS2 server based on where they're installed. And this means that you can have new features that are available, not only for the very latest version of DHS2, but also some older versions. Um, and also hopefully you can have older versions of applications that are still working on new versions of the DHS2 core server, which can be beneficial for cases where you have invested a lot in training um, users of that application, for instance. Um, the end result of this, as we've mentioned, is that implementations can select which applications to upgrade and install at any time. They can also roll back those upgrades to see the original application or to re revert to the original application that was bundled with their DHS2 core install. Um, I think that's it that I have for this presentation today. We just have uh, five more minutes to um, have some questions. Uh, we're trying to end a little bit early so people have time to go between the different sessions. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand in Zoom to uh, ask them on the community of practice so that we can answer them there um, or uh, just let us know. Have we had any questions? I, I'm just getting my, uh, my chat back up. Okay, so um, Mehdi, do you want to do you want to answer the um, or address the question that was raised, just so we have it on the on the recording? Sure. Um, regarding the uh, when the call apps will be available. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry, the I meant the one um, oh, okay. up manually yeah. uploading. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So manually yeah. uploading the new beta version of the app management app on two point three five or two point three six is not an issue at all. Um, don't worry, nothing will break. Uh, but we haven't extensively tested it on this version. So if you, you know, encounter any kind of issues, just feel free to give them to us in any form. Uh, the COP is a great place to do that. And uh, we'll fix the, those issues. Um, but so far, we haven't encountered any. We're just calling it beta because we haven't had the time so far to um, do extensive testing on those versions, but it should not cause any issues at all. Yeah, thanks. And once the once those are released for 235 and 236, it'll also be a, uh, should show up in a in a message box in the app management app to show you specifically that the app management app has a new version available in 235 and 236. Um, so you should be able to do that as well. But you can always manually install those applications or install them as you saw me do from the from the app hub in the app management app as well. Um, another question that we have here is when will other core apps be available for update uh, in the new app management app? Um, those should be available soon. Um, we don't have an exact time frame on when we'll have new versions available, but we should be getting the current versions at least uploaded and available for 2.37 uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll then start to do more testing on those versions that on, on the, the uh, earlier version of DHS2. Um, for the ones that are feature toggling, that should be a very uh, straightforward testing process. So it should not take very long as well. Um, so I think you'll see, you'll see applications available on the App Hub in the next month. Um, and you should be able to start installing them in 235 and 236 uh, shortly thereafter. Um, 
if you want to with the latest version of some of those feature toggling applications. Um, and more and more applications will start to become feature toggled. Um, we, call, we, we call the concept where a, an application can talk to multiple versions of the DHS2 server, feature toggling or version toggling. Um, we we'll see more and more of those uh, coming in the next six months to a year um, as well. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Dereve uh, asked, will, will we be able to also upgrade the DHS2 core application through the continuous app delivery? Um, if you mean the core applications like the dashboards, the maps, the um, uh, settings application, the users management application, those types of apps, yes, absolutely. Um, that's where we will be deploying these applications. If you mean the, the DHS2 core itself, the server, uh, then that will not be available through continuous application delivery. Um, that is still needs to be a manual process. It involves um, uh, testing and upgrading a database um, it involves probably installing on a different server and then uh, testing it there before installing on your production server. Um, there's a many more steps involved and there's an upgrade guide in the DHS2 documentation as well that I can link um, that could be uh, quite, uh, yeah, could can, can be, uh, it's, it's a big undertaking to, to upgrade your server. So that won't be available through continuous application delivery, but that's the reason that we're introducing continuous application delivery. So you don't need to go through that process just to get a new version of an application. Yeah, so it will not be able to be, you, you will not be able to upgrade, at least for now, you will not be able to upgrade the DHS2 core itself um, automatically. Yeah, um, thanks. Pete for that question and Birk for that answer. Um, basically, uh, only in the app management app, you will only see valid upgrades for the current DHS2 version that you are running. So when you have a version of version 236 of DHS2, you won't see uh, applications that are available uh, that are that only support 237, for instance. You'll, you'll only see the version 236 applications, um, supporting applications from the app hub. Good question. Does anybody else have any questions? Did we have any come through on the community practice? Doesn't look like it. Um, we are now five minutes before the end. We can start to wrap up, but if anybody has any more questions, um, uh, please, please share them. Uh, the event, uh, event reports or event visualizer applications um, are, there are new versions of that coming soon. Um, you'll also see, this is pretty exciting that we're um, hoping to release a beta version of the dashboard application that supports offline dashboards in the near future. So that is um, coming probably in the next month, maybe a month and a half. I don't wanna to promise too much. Um, but that uh, is, is a really exciting new feature of the dashboards application that will be published to the App Hub. It will support hopefully back to 236 um, and that will be available maybe even earlier and that will be available on the App Hub but not available until 237 in DHS2 core itself. Um, so that is quite an exciting new application. The event reports, event visualizer applications are coming soon as well, but those are a longer term process. Hmm, this is a good question. Um, what are the supported programming languages and frameworks for building apps that can be submitted to the App Hub? Um, there are no strong requirements or hard requirements on programming language or on uh, framework. That being said, these are web applications that are expected to run in a browser. So I would expect JavaScript um, applications to be to be the case. That's not always the case. You might be running WebAssembly or some other some other technologies as well, um, and those are those are all um, fine. Um, frameworks we do strongly recommend using React, and we build all of our tooling to support React applications. Um, we also include a, an extensive UI library in React. Um, but if you're building your application in Angular, the only requirement uh, or some other framework, 
the only requirement is that you include the uh, the header bar um, in your application um, so that it can uh, you can navigate from that application to other apps in the DHS2 instance. And that header bar is um, a React component currently. We may be exposing it as a, um, a standalone component that can be used outside of React in, in the future. Um, but for now, that is a React component. So you do would need to render that React component into your application uh, in addition to the Angular app that you're using. Um, so that would be the only, the only requirement um, in terms of technology is that you need to um, make sure that you have the, the header bar there. I don't know if I'm forgetting any other requirements, uh, Birk or Debra or No, maybe. or yeah, of course you need a manifest, right? Uh, manif web app yes. manifest. Um, so, but that's not really anything to do with, uh, with your framework, uh, but it's just a file that describes your app. Uh, so yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I think so we need to wrap up now, Austin. Uh, yeah. Yep, perfect. Um, Yep, so the, there is more. You can find out more on developers.dhs2.org um, about that. And thank you all very much for your time. Um, thank you very much to the presenters, um, Birk and Mehdi and Deborah. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all very much. Cheers. Thank you.